So I remember following the debates with what to do with the Rockway Beach branch back in 2018 or 2019. One side wants to do rails and the other side wants to convert it into a park. You might know them as Queen's Rail and Queen's Way. When I read these proposals, I thought, why not do both? And stumbled across the updated Queen's Rail proposal. Known as the Queenslink, it aims to reactivate the abandoned Rockway Beach branch to subway service and put a park on top of it. When I read about the Queenslink plan, I gave it my full support. The end. Except no, as I alluded to, a competing group called the Queensway has a different view of the Rockway Beach Branch. They want to turn this into a park. When I first read about the plan, I thought, this is a great plan. Except no, the Queensway is a terrible plan. It will block a meaningful public transit improvement to hundreds of thousands of South Queens residents, do nothing to decongest traffic on Woodhaven Boulevard and Van Wyck Expressway, and give Queens a gadget bond that it did not ask for. Now, I might have triggered some of you Queensway supporters, and you are probably writing a 100 page dissent against this video. That is okay but I highly suggest you watch through this video all the way before writing that 100 page dissent against this video because chances are we will address your concerns. If you ignore our recommendations, fine, but expect us to respond with a timestamp. With that being said, here we go. So before we begin, we need to know what the Queen's Link and Queen's Way are. And to know what the Queen's Link and Queen's Way are, we need to know what the Rockway Beach Branch is. The Rockway Beach Branch is an abandoned rail line in the heart of central Queens stretching from Regal Park in the north to Ozone Park in the south. It used to serve LIRR trains heading into the Rockways, and in 1950, a bridge that the branch used to run trains on caught on fire. The LIRR, not wanting to spend any more money on the branch, quickly sold the southern half to the city. And the city repaired that bridge and converted this southern half to subway service. In 1956, the IND Rockway Line opened and used the southern half of the branch and is served by the A trains today. The northern half of the branch continued to be used until 1962, where service ended after the LIRR deemed it unprofitable. This is where the Queenslink and Queen's Way comes in. The Queenslink is a plan to reactivate that abandoned northern section of the line and convert it to subway service. And here is a key piece of information that the media often does not tell you. The Queenslink will also feature parks covering the abandoned right-of-way. We are sick of that not being said in the media because they are not representing what the Queen's Link is. On the other hand, the Queen's Way plan only wants a park on that abandoned rail line, and only a park. And that is where the problems begin. So before we peck apart the Queen's Way, we want to mention the benefits that the Queenslink gives. Number one, it will give a north-south rail line in Queens, one that is desperately needed when all subway lines are east-west and feed into Manhattan. Here's me trying to get from the Rockways to Queen Center Mall. So right now I am at Beach 116th Street and I need to get to Queen Center Mall. It is currently 5.08 p.m. Let's time how long it will take to get me there.
It is 6.10 p.m., which means that it took me over an hour to get from the Rockaways to Queen Center Mall. Now, I tried my best to minimize waiting times, but what if I just missed the shuttle and added an extra 15 minutes to my commute? Or what if I'm trying to get to Flushing? That would be an easy 1 hour and 30 minute commute right there. Why does it take me so long to go by public transit to go from one place in Queens to another? Well, Queens is separated into two zones. Northern Queens, where the train lines lead into Midtown, and Southern Queens, where the train lines lead into Lower Manhattan and South Brooklyn. All of these train lines goes east-west. So what if commuters have to go north-south? They will have to take a slow bus that routinely gets stuck in traffic, despite Woodhaven Boulevard having a bus lane, or take the trains into Manhattan and backtrack. With the Queenslink, commuters can easily go north-south. This will lead to massive time savings. Imagine getting from the Rockways to Queen Center Mall in half an hour, or the Rockways to Flushing in 50 minutes. That would be revolutionary for Queen's Transit. Number two, it will parallel Woodhaven Boulevard and Van Wyck Expressway, two of the most congested roads in New York City. Going on the first point, this train line will relieve Woodhaven Boulevard and Van Wyck Expressway, two of the most congested roads in New York City. It can take thousands of cars off the roads by giving commuters the option of taking the train. This will make the road safer to drive on, as fewer people taking the road means fewer people that are going to be injured or die from car accidents. Also, there is the environmental consideration. By taking thousands of cars off the road, this means lowered greenhouse gas emissions from the transportation sector, the largest greenhouse gas emitter in the country. In a time when the climate crisis is threatening to destroy our livelihoods, the Queenslink is a necessary addition to the equation of slowing down climate change. Number three, it will boost capacity in the Rockways by 100%. Here's a clip of me trying to get from Midtown to the Rockways. So I am at 34th Street Penn Station and I want to get to Rockway Park. It is currently 3.03 p.m. Let's see how long it takes. Now, it is 4.15 p.m., which means that it took me 1 hour and 12 minutes to get from Midtown to the Rockways. Now, I am extremely lucky, as an A train was rolling into the station when I got into Penn Station. But what if I missed that train and had to wait another 10 minutes, as that is the standard frequency? Or what if I missed the shuttle and had to wait an additional 20 minutes? That would balloon the commute time to well over an hour and 30 minutes. Why are there terrible frequencies? Well, math. The A train has three branches during rush hour and does not get full track capacity, as it shares tracks with the C and D trains further north. This means that every branch's capacity is split into a third and commuters could see trains every 12 to 16 minutes to Far Rockway and Ozone Park. The Rockway Park Shuttle doesn't do much better as it also runs every 12 to 16 minutes to Rockway Park. By expanding M-Train service using the Queenslink to Rockway Park, it will double service to the Rockways. Currently, during rush hour, the A has three branches, Lefferts, Far Rockway, and Rockway Park. 
The end will take over the Rockway Park branch, meaning that peak rush hour trips to Rockway Park can be used to boost service to Lefferts Boulevard and to Far Rockway, decreasing wait times for riders in all three branches. Finally, the hated shuttle to Rockway Park will no longer be needed. Number 4. It will speed up trips for Rockway and Ozone Park residents. Here is a schedule from 1962 where it took a train 32 minutes to get from 34th Street Penn Station to Ozone Park. Today, that is 42 minutes on the A train. Well, if you're lucky enough to catch the A train when it arrives into the station. Otherwise, it can be upwards of 50 minutes. Why is there a drastic change? Well, the A train has to swing through Brooklyn first before going to Lower Manhattan and Midtown Manhattan, creating a circuitous route. But by building the Queens Link, you opened a much more direct trip to Midtown Manhattan. Using the new Queens Link, it is more of a straight shot to Midtown, shaving 15 minutes of travel time. My hour and 15 minute commute from 34th Street to Rockway Park can easily be under an hour, as I don't have to wait for the shuttle and it is a more direct trip. Number 5. It will boost capacity on the Queens Boulevard line by 33%. Forest Hills is a terrible terminal, as it can only turn around 20 trains per hour. However, the addition of CBTC will allow the MTA to run 30 to 36 trains per hour on the local track, meaning that there is wasted potential on that line. But by diverting the M train to the Queens Link, there will be enough turnaround capacity for better service. This means that the G can make its return, and we can add an additional 10 trains per hour on the local tracks. Also, the Queens Link envisions that Woodhaven Boulevard will be turned into an express station, further reducing delays on the express, as well as adding another transfer point that will spread the road at Roosevelt Avenue. Number 6. It will feature park space on the right of way. The Queens Link will build 33 new acres of parks around the train line helping to create a unique landmark in New York City. These parts can be used for basketball and tennis courts, bike lanes, farmers markets, and so much more. By creating a bike path around the train line, we are able to create a more robust bike network in Queens, especially when Queens lacks high quality, protected bike lanes. Remember, whatever you will be getting in the Queen's Way will also be included in the Queen's Link. And wow, it is such a great segue to... We at the Tech Transit Association loves parks. Parks are a great way to disconnect from the city and everyday life. However, it is not about the park, but what the park will do for the Rockway Beach Branch. This park will serve as a block to future transit expansion in the area. When I said that claim, some of you might be thinking, hang on, can we just build a park now and build a train line later? To which I answer, well, let's go on a history lesson. In the 1960s and 70s, when the IND 63rd Street line was being constructed, workers had to dig out a portion of Central Park. Locals did not like that idea, and that line was stalled and was made more expensive than it needed to be. That is what the Queensway is counting on, that the park serves as a nice block to transit access. This is because tearing up a park is not a good look to your constituents, and will be more expensive in the long run than instead being integrated with the park, because you will be paying construction crews more time to build a park, then rip out the park, install train infrastructure, then put the park back, rather than build a park and train side by side. Furthermore, if you think that the Queensway and the Trust for Public Land, the organization behind the Queensway, wants to improve your daily life, think again. Because for a long time, they said that Queens does not need a new subway line. While that is a laughable claim, they were serious enough to post it on their website. By doing so, they think that overcrowding on the 7 and E were acceptable. They think that dangerous overcrowding on the Q52 and Q53 buses was acceptable. 
They think that dangerous overcrowding at Roosevelt Avenue, Main Street, Jamaica Center, and Woodhaven Boulevard were acceptable. They think that the fact that Queens residents suffer from one of the longest commute times in the nation and lack serious connectivity to the subway is acceptable. All of this shows that they have no idea what Queens needs and that you shouldn't be listening to them on city planning. But let's give Queensway the benefit of the doubt, as they have since scrubbed that statement after being dunked on by transit activists. What if they are serious about giving Queens better service? After all, one of the founders of the Queensway, Karen Emas, stated that she was not opposed to better transit service. But this is just NIMBY gaslighting. To give Queens better service, we have to construct train lines. They don't magically appear out of thin air, or the need for better transit does not disappear once you're done opposing them. If everyone opposes construction, then nothing will be ever be done. Also, there's no cheat code to transit. Running a better bus rapid transit won't save us, Emos. It has been tried and failed in not only in New York City, but most of the US. Trains, on the other hand, will. New York City literally runs on trains. So build it. We spend billions of dollars on garbage like highways that will end up congested due to induced demand. We spend time building more complicated stuff than the Queenslink, like the Brooklyn Bridge, completed 140 years ago, the Empire State Building, completed 92 years ago, and oh yeah, the entire New York City subway system. Yes, the New York City subway had to contend with terrible soil, the East River, deep terrain, political storms, and that thing was still mostly completed in four decades. So please don't pull the, uh, too expensive and too complicated, because if there is a will, there is a way. Remember that the Queensway had a chance to collaborate with the Queens Link on giving Queens better transit. But the Queensway refuse and will continue to virtue signal and do absolutely nothing. Of course, even when presented with the facts, Queensway activists will say nonsense. Usually, we can laugh at it and move on, but they have some serious sway. So we need to pick them apart before they spread. The first one comes from Mayor Eric Adams. Residents of Queens has been asking for the Queens way for decades, and today city government told them yes, we will. Phase 1 will give them 5 acres of parkland, and in the end, Queens will get 7 new miles of beautiful recreation, exercise, and natural park space. Hashtag get stuff done. Okay, let's address that point, that the Queens way is more popular than the Queens link, and since majority rules, it is that the Queens way will win. However, as much as Mayor Adams and Queensway wants to believe it, local residents actually want the Queenslink and the rail service over the Queensway. In a 2014 Queens College poll on what to do with the abandoned Rockway Beach branch, 34% of residents wanted rail, 28% wanted only the park, 18% wanted rail mixed in with the parks, and 10% opposed both rails, and parks. That is a 52 to 28 in favor of the Queen's Link, as both the 34% and 18% want the rail option. Now, this was done in 2014, but I argue that the numbers would be even more favorable for the Queen's Link in 2023. As Queens is more diverse and houses more immigrants, they are more dependent on public transit. This is represented in local politics too, where a community board later voted 32 to 3 to study the reactivation of train service on the Rockway Beach branch. Anyway, that quote is complete nonsense, but if it makes you feel better, Adams got ratioed on Twitter for making that statement, only making our point that Queenslink is more popular than the Queen's Way. The next claim is that Queen's Way would be better now because perfection is the enemy and sometimes you just have to settle for something lower to get things moving. Except no, what the Queen's Way plans to do is to block transit access. They might not explicitly say it, but they are not dumb to realize what they are doing. 
the Queensway will do nothing either than to block train reactivation on the route, and building the Queensway will make it near impossible to build that train line. Remember that in the 1970s, when the MTA was digging out a portion of Central Park, opposition made the project stall. You see, I would agree that perfection is the enemy, but I won't accept something that will block transit access as that is what the Queensway plans on doing. The next claim is the noise and how people don't want an elevated rattling by their windows. For those people, they ought to educate themselves. In the Queenslink plan, they envisioned that the northern portion of the line is underground. And in the places that are elevated, modern concrete guideways with sound barriers would be used. These new technologies also include continuously welded rails and vibration absorbing ties and have been used on the air train and are extremely quiet. Another claim we want to mention is that since this abandoned rail line runs too close to homes and people don't want construction near them. For these people, I have a question. Is this an excuse not to build or maintain anything? In all construction sites, there will be people living and working near them. I know that I'm being a bit hyperbolic here, but I do feel like I need to address this. Anyway, there is precedent for construction to happen close to people's homes. Take the Alaska Skyway removal project, for example, where construction crews removed a highway that was mere inches away from historic buildings. Or when New York City removed the elevated lines, construction crews had to do the exact same thing. One more thing I want to mention is that this section of the right of way that runs very close to homes is only a short section. The rest are surrounded by ample space for construction crews and cranes. The Queenslink is not blind to the fact that construction might have to take place near people's homes, which is why the Queenslink is vigorously conducting outreach and hearing these people's concerns. Then we got the people who say that this line will see little to no use because the demand can be filled by using express buses. Then these people will go deeper on whatever elaborate BRT proposal as if that is an adequate replacement to a rail line. Okay, to address that point, the Queenslink is projected to serve 47,000 riders a day according to the MTA's own feasibility study. That is in the range of the IRT New Lots, IRT Notion, and IRT Dyer level ridership, meaning yes, this does have the demand of the rail line. But let's engage in a discussion about this, which really goes to show how misinformed Queensway supporters are on this topic. This is a railroad right of way, not a park. This means that it would be much easier to convert it back into a rail line, as the right of way is already there. This means no expensive, deep tunnel boring machines, just simple cut and cover. So why turn it into a park? Will you be in favor of turning the IRT Lexington Avenue line, the IRT 7th Avenue line, or any Manhattan rail line right of way into a park and giving you the M15 and the M11 buses? No, I don't think so. So why is this railroad right of way any different? One that can see actual use. Is Queens not worthy enough for transit expansion? Queens has a higher population than Manhattan and is experiencing the fastest growth in the city. So shouldn't we be thinking outside the box in order to give Queens better transit instead of building gadget bonds that will never carry what the Queens Link can carry? And also, please don't pull the Queens Link is not located in a transit desert, so we shouldn't build it. The reason why Queenslink is not located in a transit desert is because there are other train lines in the area that serve different corridors than the Queenslink does. Those train lines are east-west, and Queenslink is north-south, meaning that the Queenslink will be great for connectivity. Moreover, Ozone Park and Richmond Hill residents don't have to wait for an A or J train that will go to Lower Manhattan first, as they now have a straight shot into Manhattan. The quality of these train lines matter, as by adding another service to the Rockways, it would have waiting times for Rockway residents, and will give them a nice shortcut to Midtown Manhattan. So ridership could increase from 47,000 to 80,000 and potentially into 100,000. Now, can a bus rapid transit system ever provide this? Obviously not. 
Buses are slow, capped at 25 miles per hour, and average less than half of that, and they don't connect to rails, meaning that your long commute into Manhattan will continue. Leave the Q52 and 53 alone and build the Queenslink, because no matter how grand a BRT you build, you will never match the benefits of what a true rail line can. Anyway, let's tackle the next comment about money, and this tweet from Adrian Beniape sums up what the Queensway activist says about costs. Nice idea, but unlikely. There is no way to build a park on the verges of a rail line, and the MTA has neither the money up to $8 billion, or the intention of reactivating a subway or heavy rail system on a line it closed 60 years ago. So build Queensway NYC instead of nothing. Okay, Adrian Beniape is right on one thing, and that the MTA does not want to build the Queenslink. This is why we argue that the MTA sandbagged and inflated the cost. But we're going to argue that the MTA should not be building any new subway projects because that is the city's job. The city needs to get in the game and pay for the cost of the Queenslink because they have certainly done it when they extended the 7 in the wrong direction. We will reserve the topic of how to pay for subway projects in a future video. But for now, let's talk about the cost of the Queenslink. First off, there is evidence that the MTA inflated the cost of the Queenslink. They refused to release the study for a year, meaning that there might be something that the MTA is trying to hide. Next, cut and cover does not cost more than deep bore, yet somehow the Queenslink costs more per mile than the 2nd Avenue subway. All of this led to activists finding out that the MTA inflated the soft costs, or cost other than construction, according to an independent report by Thames. All of this leads to Queensland costing around $3.4 to $3.7 billion. However, we do believe that it should cost less than half of that. In a fantastic study by the Effective Transit Alliance, they outline how to cut down costs. I won't go super in detail about that, as you can check in the description below, but by standardization, unification, and the awarding of contracts based on merit rather than price, you can get the Queenslink to cost less than $1 billion. However, you will think that Beniape would be actively fighting to lower costs if he cared about the transportation issue that plagues Queens. But he obviously does not, as he is focused on building a gadget bond than actual city planning. So don't expect him to be engaging in good faith politics. Remember that he tweeted out the following, Come up with an affordable plan that includes actual park and realistic chances of funding, so we can comment. I don't see it happening on such a narrow right of way with no money for rail in that location. So we can have a park or have nothing. Most people chose a park over nothing. Checkmate Queenslink, you got nothing. Ha 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 except no. If you go to the Queenslink.org and go to what is the Queenslink, there you go. Everything that the Queenslink envisions is on there. It has been there since 2019. Read up, Benny you might learn something. And that is the point I would like to end on today. Backers of the Queensway don't care about you. They only care about blocking meaningful public transit. We can all sit down and pick Queensway and TPL apart bit by bit, but they have extremely important backers, political elites. The Queensway is the perfect project for these elites, as it is just something of the status quo, blocks any meaningful change, and serves as a nice temporary jobs program for those in power. We can laugh at these elites, but they have their minds set on this thing, and if we do nothing other than to squabble at them like chickens, they will win. They will get their minoritarian viewpoint that Queens needs another gadget bond instead of a revolutionary train line in a time when we face a serious climate change crisis. Queens cannot afford to get this dumb project and we certainly should not deliver Queensway and their political backers their 90th victory. We can fight back and remember, after this video is over, if you care for the Queenslink, do something. Queenslink is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that desperately needs to be built and will definitely like more hands. If you are interested, email the Queenslink. 
If not, share this video and get others to sign the petition at queenslink.org because the debate of Queenslink versus the Queensway will expire on June of this year, as construction of Phase 1 of the Queensway will begin. Once it begins, it will be